Hey folks, Nick Mock 7 here again. So first off, thanks to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate everyone taking a few minutes out of their day to join me. Uh, it's very cool. And um, also appreciate uh, checking out everyone else's channel and seeing what everyone else has been up to. So again, uh, thanks very much. But on to the topic of the day. So in part one, I focused on getting a basic idea about electricity, um, but now it's time to move to the more important stuff, uh, the safety. So if you do nothing else, uh, you have to, you, you must use a GFCI, uh, sometimes also called a GFI. But why? Uh, and I also hear some folks kind of wondering, why can't I just use a surge protector? So stay with me for just a few minutes today and I'll answer these questions. So a uh, GFCI is a special electrical socket that can sense if there's a sudden draw to ground and then immediately shut off the electricity. Now this can happen in a split second and it can save your life or at the very least save you from a painful shock. So a GFCI works by monitoring the current balance between the ungrounded hot or typically the black wire uh, and the grounded neutral white conductor, it's the white wire in your box. As soon as the current flowing through the hot conductor is in the range of four to six milliamps, uh, more than the current flowing uh, through the return grounded conductor, the GFCI can sense this unbalance and then trips or <clears throat> opens the circuit, uh, which cuts the circuit off. The assumption is that this imbalance indicates that part of the current is flowing through you. So if you refer back to that chart that I showed you in the first video, and I'll put that up in this video as well, you can see that this trip current is well below the danger level. So a shock might be felt initially, but any possible danger or injuries will be easily avoided. So now the next logical question is, so Nick Mock 007, you've convinced me to get my very own GFCI outlet that I can snuggle and pet and call George. Well, where do I get one? So I'll tell you, Lenny, uh, there are various types of GFCIs out there. Now, some are portable, uh, some are installed in the wall electrical box and others can be installed directly at the circuit uh, breaker, the main panel. Now, portable GFIs are self-contained units you just plug into a standard outlet uh, and then you plug your aquarium equipment just right into that device. They have the advantage of not needing to have any electrical knowledge uh, to install them, and if you move, you just unplug them and take them with you. Now, wall-mounted GFIs can only be installed if you know what you're doing and are comfortable working with your house's electrical wiring. So I'm not going to go into how to do this, um, but it's really pretty easy. But if you don't know what you're doing, consult an electrician. Uh, GFCI circuit breakers um, are the best thing to use if you have a you know a fish room with lots of tanks uh, all in the same room. Now they're slightly more complicated to install uh, because you have to install them at the main panel. And unless you really really know what you're doing, I would advise you to you know get an electrician to come out. Uh, it's not that hard of a job to be honest. I've done it in my own house uh, for a bathroom. Uh, but again, if you're not really comfortable working with wiring inside the main panel, uh, the levels of electricity in the main panel can really can kill you. So again, don't do that unless you know what you're doing. Okay, which one is best? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't care. Just use one, um, but I'll give you my opinion. If you're just running one tank, the in-wall option is the best. Um, they're, uh, you know, though actually an in-wall GFI will protect any other outlet downstream, so you can actually use it on multiple tanks. But uh, if you have a fish room with lots of tanks, I would actually consider doing one at the main panel uh, and just be done with it. Um, I don't really like the portable ones for a couple specific reasons, but they do work and they will save your life just as well as the rest. So if that's your only option, uh, I think they cost 10 to $20. Uh, just get one, don't think twice about it, just be done. Okay, let's dispel some myths. So I'm not gonna be pointing any fingers or anything, but I've seen several people in other videos mentioning that they just use a surge protector instead of a GFCI and that's perfectly fine. So let me be clear, that's 100% wrong. Please do not do this. And let me explain what the difference is between a surge protector and a GFCI. Uh, and by the way, I would actually recommend using both, but if you forego one, it should be the surge protector, not the GFCI. So the other options, you can actually just buy a surge protector that has a built-in GFCI. Okay, as we already mentioned, a GFCI protects from ground faults, such as an electrical short, uh, but the surge protectors actually protect against surges, such as a lightning strike or power outage. 
Um, a GFCI monitors, remember, I already mentioned this, the amount of current flowing from hot to neutral, and it trips if there's any imbalance. For a surge protector, if the voltage from the outlet surges or the spike uh, or, or spikes, the surge protector diverts the extra electricity into the outlet's grounding wire. So does that make sense? Too much electricity, it's diverted to ground. Okay, now I'm gonna cut this off here again, um, but seriously, go get your you know GFCI, make sure your tank is protected. Uh, and I would appreciate it if you hit that virtual tin can by um, you know hitting the like button, uh, giving me a thumbs up, or making a comment. But if you didn't like the video, as again, I always say, hit the dislike button. Now, there's much more coming in part three. I'm gonna look at a few more basic safety issues around electricity and explore grounding probes and whether or not to use them. <clears throat> and remember, when it comes to electricity, an elephant never forgets.